The, the reason is, using your food, you're going to be able to rotate your food. <coughs> You'll also realize, hey, I don't like that thing that much, so I won't buy any more of it. Or, hey, I really like that. that that's awesome product. Or you'll realize the wife will say, hey, you know what? If you gave me this seasoning or this item, I can make that dish better. And that way you can go out and, and, and buy that item. So you need to use your food. It, it's sort of funny we're even talking about this because 100 years ago, people would think we're crazy. We're going to a prepper conference because they did that. They, they stocked food. Everyone had a root cellar. Everyone put food back, and, and they used it. So make sure you use what you have. So you can uh, make better recipes. Um, let's talk about some food. I'm, I'm all for you going out and buying a year's supply of Mountain House, whatever it is. You can do that if you want to. I would rather you individually make your food stockpile. If you're a wealthy person, yeah, go buy it and put it back. I would rather you, though, pick and choose and, and buy exactly what you know you're going to use and use it. MREs. I've eaten thousands and thousands of MREs. Do I like MREs? Yes, I like. It's it's the environment I eat this in. If if me and you want to go get a steak, we'll go get a steak. Now let's say I say yeah, let's go get the steak, but I want to take the MRE with me. And I start eating the MRE, and he start eating a steak. That is not the environment I'm going to really appreciate this MRE in. I'm going to put it down and say, hey, miss, can you bring me one of those? So when you, when you stock food, also think of the environment you're going to eat it in. Now let's say me and him go up to the mountains for three days, and this is all we have, and in about 6 o'clock at night after hiking up the mountain, we break out one of these. It's going to taste real good to us. So evaluate food under the environment you'll probably eat it in. One more thing about MREs. Most MREs you buy will have a date on them, on the case. That will tell a lot of things about the MRE. Food in general is very sensitive to heat, very. So if you buy 30 years, or a year supply of food and they say, well, this is going to last 30 years, it's going to last 30 years if you have it under the controlled environment. Remember that. Because that, that 30 year shelf life might turn into 10 years very quickly if it's not stored right. This MRE will store at 130 months at 60 degrees. 130 months at 60 degrees. If I stored it in my root cellar, which this has been stored in there, it's going to last me a long, long time. If I put this in my shed at 90 degrees, I will get 55 months out of it. So, Store your food at the best conditions you can do. That's the, probably the biggest thing people make mistakes. Store your food under the most ideal situation you can do. Pouches. There's a lot of food out there that comes in pouches, and typically they all have the expiration date on. This is 2013. Uh, most of these pouches will last about five or seven years. I, I like these products. And Mountain House Wise, and there's probably a million other out there, they're good. The problem with some of them are individual tastes. So I might love this product, but you might hate this product. So don't buy a huge amount of anything unless you sample it. Go get a sample. If you're thinking about buying from a company, hey, can you send me a sample? Or can I buy one sample off of you? Um, because there's some Wise products that my wife likes, and, and there's some I... Feed to the dog, it'll be, be, be like that, because she does not like the product at all. So make sure you sample what you're buying. Another thing with these things are they're, they're already a complete made meal. So they're already seasons how you, for how the company wants them to be seasoned. So if you don't like the seasoning, it's hard to change it because all the ingredients are in there. The only thing you can really do with some, if it's a, a rice-based product, to, to get a different taste is to add another cup of rice which will also make that meal go farther. So that is an option if you don't, if you think they're too spicy. Pouches are great. I'm going to talk more about them when I do bug out bags this afternoon. And, and that's their purpose. This is not really a long-term answer to what you need. Uh, the cost of this plus the way it's stored. It's still a great product for camping, for hiking, and for short-term emergencies like a bug out bag. Cans. 
there's there's so many companies out there right now, um, and, and most of them are good, some of them are bad, some of them are right now getting on board to make money off of us, which is fine. This is capitalism, so I'm all for that. Um, when you pick a company, pick a company that definitely has a track record that's been around, um, and, and check them out. The best company I like out there is the Mormon Canner. If you've seen my channel, I love the Mormon Canner. I, I push it very hard. I am not Mormon. I get like a hundred people ask me every day on my channel, are you a Mormon? No. I would support the Catholic Church, the Baptist Church, whatever church that comes out there that will offer a great product for people. And that's what it is. Um, I, I've been going to the cannery a couple of years, and, and they're the nicest people. I recommend going to the cannery. They will not talk religion to you at all. I've been going there many, many times, and I've never never had any questions to me about it. They offer a great product, and this is what the Mormon Church does for a service to people, and that's all it is. So if you're scared about going because they're a religious group, it's like going to Walmart. It's the same process. The, the problem with the cannery right now is in South Carolina, in Columbia, they were letting anyone come in. You didn't have to be a Mormon. You could call and make an appointment and go to the cannery. Right now, the demand for food and the demand for uh, survival supplies have gone through the roof, literally. When I first started going to the cannery, I could go to the cannery anytime I wanted to by picking up the phone and making an appointment. Anytime. I could pick the time, the exact time I wanted to go. Now, they have canceled so many appointments, not because they don't want to serve you, it's because they physically do not have the food in the system to support the cannery. Um, so, so think about that. Try it. Right now, some of the canneries, you have to have a Mormon to sponsor you. So if you know a Mormon, just say, hey, can you make the phone call? Can you arrange that? They are a nonprofit organization. You will not find better product or a cheaper price on the product because they are selling it to you at cost. So that's why I like to promote them. Um, there's, no, there's no profit in it. Um, let's talk about... I'm an emergency essentials fan. There's a lot of companies out there good, but this is the company I've been doing for years, so I'm going to talk about emergency essentials. It can be any company that has a track record of success in the business. They have a lot of products out there. I'm going to explain something. It's freeze-dried and dehydrated. A lot of people ask me, what's the difference between freeze-dried and dehydrated? Freeze-dried product is a product that they take, they put it under a vacuum, they then super freeze it to about minus 50 degrees Fahrenheit. A fast freeze, instantaneous frozen product. They then evaporate all the water from the product and they can remove about 98% of the water. While it's still in that environment, they either can it or they put it in a pouch. And that is freeze dry. So there's a lot more processing to that. So it will cost a tad more. Sometimes it doesn't, but in generally, they have to do more work to get it into the can. That is freeze-dried. The other product is dehydrated, and everybody knows what a dehydrator does. It removes the moisture down to a level where you can store it without it going bad or rancid or molding. So you have freeze-dried and you have dehydrated. Um, most of the dehydrated products that they come in are meals. Yep, you have all your ingredients ready to go. You just add hot water and you can eat. Dehydrated is usually a single item, either be it uh, potatoes, carrots, whatever, whatever they dehydrate. But it's usually a single item in the can. There is, I look at stocking food in three different things. It's called your everyday food, things that your family eats. So if you're just getting started and you're like, man, there's 16 companies wanting my money for this food, what do I do? What, what you do, and I stress on my channel a lot, is you buy the things that your family eats. So if you have no food pantry stocked up or you're just getting started, when you go to the grocery store, you look at the sales flyer and it says, buy one, get one free. And if you eat that product, buy it. I made the mistake in life of buying products we don't eat, and I will never live it down because my wife had to throw them away. So I never buy a product that we don't eat. Um, so go to the store. If you're on a budget, coupons. 
Um, buy one, get one free. Sales like, but start, start getting a little bit more of your everyday food. The reason that's important is your family's already used to it. So you're not going to pull any surprises and, and pull out things that they're not used to. If, you, if it's a short-term emergency, like the power goes off for three or four days, you're eating the same thing and you're, you're trying, to, trying to heat stuff up to make it good. So, everyday food. Buy that and stock it. You might say, well, my pantry's full. What am I going to do next? I got a small house. I would put this under short term. Let's say you get a bucket. You can go out and buy a brand new bucket or you can go to any of the bakeries. Uh, the bakeries, Bilo, Ingalls, anywhere you have a bakery, go there and say, hey, can I have your bucket? A few years ago, I was getting buckets for free. And then all you crazy preppers had to start doing what I was doing. And my buckets cost a dollar. And now they cost me two dollars. So there is a demand for even the used buckets. But they're still a better deal than going and buying a brand new bucket. Um, and they're definitely food grade. So go get a bucket. And now we can turn this normal everyday food into what I call short term. Short term. I bought some beans. I'm not going to do anything special to these beans. A lot of times you can look at the expiration date. I'm going to take my beans, put it in my container. I have no mylar in here. It's just a bucket. Whatever my family likes to eat, I put in this bucket. You can put one item in the bucket or you can just mix it. It's whatever you want to work with. Now I can put the lid on here and I'm going to turn this into short term. Most of those items in here will last two and three years easily. Tuna fish, six and seven years. Um, there's a lot of products that will last a long time. Now are you saying, how, how do I know if the food is going to go bad? The expiration dates on cans are for a few reasons. First of all, it's for a liability issue. It's just much easier to put a, a label on there that says expires. But that has really nothing to do with the food. Next is, they put that expiration date on because if you come and you buy this food and you put it in your closet and then all of a sudden you look at it and it expired, what do you do? Oh, that's no good because let's see, it expired December 28th, 2013, and it's the 29th today, so that food went bad. No. And you'd probably throw it away and say, hey, we need to buy another one of, one of these chickens. The food will not go bad. And some people say, well, it's going to start losing nutritional value. It, it probably will lose nutritional value over time. Everything does. But it will be a, a, you know, a very small amount. So it's still going to be edible. It's still going to be safe to eat, but yeah, you might only get, instead of 10% of this vitamin, you might get 9%, but it's still going to fill your belly. The best way to tell if a food is bad is to look at the can. There's no rust on the can. The can is not bulging. Bulging is the worst sign. If you have a can that's bulging, there's, there's things in your food that's reacting, so I wouldn't even recommend opening it. If you do open it, open it outside, because your wife's going to kill you from the smell. So, look at the can. The can's not bulging, there's no rust, there's no major dents in it, I'm good to go. Let's say you have some food in your stock pile and you're checking it and you dropped the can and it made a dent in it. Immediately remove that can, put it in your everyday use. Do not store a can that is damaged. It will, it will just more likely go bad. So, we're working on our short term and we can all do that. It doesn't take much, it takes a $2 bucket at any bakery and food we normally buy. So we go to Walmart, we go to Bilo, especially Bilo or Ingles, they have buy one, get one free sales. I, I buy extra and I put back. I just saved money. Prepping didn't cost me any money. I saved money because next month or in a year when I eat that product, I guarantee you my chicken breast from Hormel will not be the same price it is today. I guarantee you. I mean, it goes up every day. So I'm actually saving money. So people say, I can't afford to prep. You can't afford not to prep. You will save money, guaranteed. All right, so we're working on our short term. It requires no, no extra money because we're going to consume that food already in our family diet. We save money. Let's talk about Mylar. Everybody likes Mylar. This is a Mylar bag. This was packed commercially, but it...